I really can't talk right now. I'm actually getting ready to go on at work camp. W-O-R-D, capital C, A-M-P. Yeah, I know I don't know anything about WordCamp or WordPress. They don't know that. Honest to God, they think I'm some kind of expert up here. I, really, I got to talk to you later because there are like 300 people who got up really early in the morning, on a Saturday morning even, to come here. All right? I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Kids, right? So, uh, Rico's a little shorter than I am. We're going to move that back. How are we doing in the back there? Yeah? Okay. Oh, I thumbs up and, and waves. All right. That's good. If I, if I start to move away from this, though, and I tend to move around a bit when I speak, uh, remind me. <laughs> so, good morning and welcome to WordCamp. I am so impressed with the number of people that can get up early on a Saturday morning and uh, actually come to uh, VU where there are a lot of students who do not get up early in the morning, right? So um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what happens after WordCamp. So you guys have been working on websites, and I often think about them as the Field of Dreams websites. You pour all of your hopes and dreams into these websites, and then it's ready to go, you turn off the switch, you take off those no robot TXT things, right? And all of a sudden, the floods of people come pouring into your website, right? Not so much. So that's why I'm here. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about marketing and how you get people to come to your website. So we're going to have a little bit of a marketing 101 if you haven't even thought about how you're going to get people to your website when it's done. And uh, I tend to think about marketing as a circus. So marketing, when you think about it in the form of a circus, what happens before a circus goes on is you have an advance man. Someone who comes to town weeks and weeks and weeks before the circus and he buys ads, and he buys billboards, and he puts up posters all over town. And he's supplying the artwork for those ads. He's got some really pretty pictures of elephants that he's handing out to the local newspapers. He's putting on the billboards. And he's controlling the message 100%. He's also paying for space. That's called advertising. All right, the next stage is the cir circus actually arrives in town. And what they do is they have an elephant parade. They get the elephants to usually come off a railroad car and travel through town in line to get to the big top. And you know, it forms a, it's actually something that uh, is very useful you know, you want the elephants to be there at the big top when the kids are there. But it also serves as a promotion. It's an event. And one of the things about events is that sometimes things happen. Elephants and events tend to get a little bit out of control sometimes. So if your event gets out of control, much like the elephant parade might get out of control and it tramples the flowers in the mayor's flower garden, you probably are going to make it into the news. All right? The local newspapers are going to be covering what's happening in your world. And in this particular case, not exactly a positive thing, but there is a whole form of thought around public relations and marketing that says, just get my name right. Not a believer in that up here. So I would really like you to have positive interactions with the media. So I'm generally the person that people call when they want to have positive interactions with the media. So I'm the person behind the scenes as a PR person that gets the mayor to smile for the camera and say, you know what, nobody was hurt, no big deal, everybody loves the circus, let's go and take our kids to the circus. 
So there's actually over the last several years been a new form of marketing added to all of our toolboxes, and that's social media. And for me, when I think about social media, I think about social media as giving a megaphone to every single person in the big top. So if each and every one of you had <laughs> had, a, had a megaphone, this is the result, okay? There's an extraordinary din out there. There is noise, everybody shouting at the top of their lungs, and they're all shouting different messages. They might not even be talking about the circus at all. If that happens, you need to take control of your social media. And if you're not on social media, and if you don't have your own megaphone, that's really tough. So I want you all to think about social media as it pertains to your marketing and your website. If you think about one particular type of social media, who here is on LinkedIn? Yeah, it's, it's really like the, uh, the be-all, end-all of professional social networking. This is my LinkedIn network from last year, okay? They actually recently took this particular metric off the LinkedIn website. They used to tell you how many connections you have and how many connections that enabled you to access. So at the time, my 2,400 connections linked me to over 17 million people. Now to put that in perspective, the Boston Globe every morning, and that's our biggest local daily newspaper here in the New England region, lands on 800,000 doorsteps. So my 17 million people in my network gives me access to many, many more people than the Boston Globe would. That number at the bottom, the 23,000, those are the people that got added to my personal network over the course of a single day. So the power of that social networking is incredible, and I wanna make sure that everybody here is thinking about how you can harness that. You also wanna think about how you are setting up your goals. What are your goals for your website? If your website is all about visibility for your brand or if you're selling something on your website, that's great. But you actually want to think about how you're selling whatever it is you're doing. If you're selling an idea or if you're selling a physical product or you're getting people to try something or you're get asking them to do something. So think about your goals as you think about your marketing. And make sure that your social networking, your marketing, your public relations, your promotions, and your advertising are all set up to do that. Over the last several years, as Rico mentioned, we've been doing something called Mass Innovation Nights. Mass Innovation Nights is a monthly product launch party and networking event. Over the last six years, we've helped to launch over 800 new products. And the way Mass Innovation Nights works is we encourage the social media community to come out and blog and tweet and shoot video, post pictures. In a single night, we can generate a lot of visibility for local companies. And what we're doing is we are activating the local community. You might have your own local community that you can tap as well. You have friends, you have family, you have the people that are interested in the same thing that you're interested in. When you're thinking about your marketing, you might not have to be going out and buying expensive advertising. You may just need to activate your local community, whatever they are and whoever they are. Make it easy for them, give them their messages, because remember the, the big megaphone in the, in the big top? That's an awful lot of noise if you're not pointing those megaphones in the same direction. So give people the messages that you want them to be spreading, and get them to be working for you. And also think about what they get out of it. Um, I was recently contacted by somebody who was doing a crowdfunding project. And uh, we did a crowdfunding project last year for Innovation Women. I always tell people, you are not getting donors and funders from the crowdfunding websites. You're bringing the funders to that website. So you need to be able to activate your local community. And this person was astonished that their friends were not prepared to give them 
And I said, well, you know, what is their reward? What is their incentive? Well, they just want to help me. I'm sure they do want to help you, but I don't know about you, but I don't have $50,000 hanging around to give to my friends. So you need to make sure that all of your marketing efforts when you're incenting your community is something that they want, and you can point them in the right direction and help them help you. So I usually keep my presentation short because a lot of people tend to have questions about social media. And usually one of the most common one is like kind of how do I get started? And I always talk to people about the power of their name and getting their name out there. So choosing your name is a good place to start. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take those or if we're also half asleep still, how are we doing on time? We are doing awesomely, except I turned off my phone. I have no idea what time it is now. <laughs> are we doing on time, Tom? You got um, 20 minutes. Yeah, this is what happens when somebody tells me I have a 15 minute slot to fill and then it's 30 minutes. <laughs> so, all right, questions? No. We're all still safe. I see one in the back. The question from the back was talk about Innovation Women. Um, Innovation Women is a speakers bureau for entrepreneurial and technical women. Uh, something about WordCamp. WordCamp is really awesome about keeping all of the uh, panels and the speakers balanced in terms of gender and keeping the voices diverse. A lot of technical conferences are not so awesome at that. We tend to see the same people up at the front of the room, and as an event manager, the people that I see at the front of the room are often the people that I ask to speak at my events. So if we want to hear from the same people over and over again, that's what's going to happen. Um, so we created a database of entrepreneurial, technical, and innovative women and we are inviting event managers who need to gender balance their panels or find speakers to come and check out those people and invite them to speak at their events. There are other questions there? Do, do, do. Sure, so the question was to um, address the specific tactics that we use to successfully launch over 800 new products with Mass Innovation Nights. Um, there are a couple of things that we do. Number one, we start out with guidance for everyone. So we have a program at every event. We call it the Tweet Sheet, and the Tweet Sheet provides information about every single product that is at that event. It has the company's Twitter handle, so you'll notice that I always put my Twitter handles up when I'm presenting, so that anybody that wants to tweet about me while I'm presenting can actually know what my username is, so we give all that information to people. We also put a QR code on the Tweet Sheet for every company that automatically loads up a tweet, we make it easy for them. We have um, sheets of paper, physical paper, at every table at the live event. And those have that same QR code on it in case somebody doesn't have their tweet sheet handy or has trouble with the little tiny QR codes. So we do everything we can to make it easy for people. We also talk to them about their self-interest. We make sure that they understand why it's beneficial for them to be at the event, for them to connect with the companies and to support the local entrepreneurs. When we started Mass Innovation Nights, Mass Innovation Nights was started in a very, very different financial and economic time. Um, if you remember November of 2008, that's when I first had the idea. I don't know about you, but I was out of work. There were a lot of people I knew that were out of work. And uh, when you have a little bit of time on your hands, you start thinking about ways to connect with other people. So we were talking to people about how we could make local startups and entrepreneurs successful. And if we 
put 200 people in a room and we all use the resources at our disposal, we could help make those companies successful. Somebody in that room might have a connection to a venture capitalist. Someone in that room might know customer or a partner. And maybe that person is in their social network. Maybe that person is their next door neighbor. So it was a little bit, uh, you know, the law of bumping into people. The more people you bump into, the more the, there is likeliness that you will have something that's useful. So if you get 200 people in the room and you tell them all, tweet about that product and that company, something will happen. And something pretty much does happen at every single event. Uh, we had one company that came to me, they were last minute substitutions, so they didn't get the benefit of the 30 day run up and promotion that we do for each event. But they called me the next morning and said, we had six people that bought our product off the website after last night. We've only been to Mass Innovation Nights. And some of those people were not local people, so it wasn't that they saw us at the event. They told us that um, Rubbermaid from Grand Rapids, Michigan came and bought their product. And I said, well, that makes sense. Someone in the room tweeted about it, and someone at Rubbermaid saw that tweet and needed that product. So if you think again about you know, the connections and the number of people that are connected to your social network, you have immense power in this room. If there's 350, 400 people here today, and each one of you picked up your cell phone, you know, even if you only have a few followers, those followers have their fo own followers. They have a network of their own, and they can do a lot to actually connect and send a message outwards. Um, we also use traditional marketing methods. So the minute we're done with one event, we line up the next event. We have a showcase on our website, so every single product goes onto the website. We send out a weekly email newsletter that goes out to 12,000 people. And each one of them we remind over and over again. We are giving you something awesome. We are giving you content. We're giving you a fun networking event. We're giving you a way to get new business and get connect with other people in your community. You just have to do one thing for us and for these software companies and these new products. You need to just tell somebody else about them. I don't care if you're not into social media. Turn to your next door neighbor and tell them about it. And between the 12,000 people in our network, it's amazing the connections that we can make. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. So for everyone else, the question was an example of the products that we represented. So over the last six years, Mass Innovation Nights has launched 800 plus new products. We've helped launch everything from organic whoopie pies to underwater dog treadmills. The dog is not underwater, the treadmill is. Um, iPhone apps, enterprise software, medical devices. Um, you name it, we've probably helped launch it. Uh, we do some events that are themed, but a lot of times what we're doing is putting the different products in a wild jumble next to each other. So if you get the Whoopi Pies next to a web-based product, they have very interesting conversations. Uh, the Whoopi Pie company is going to be worried about things like warehouse space and paying employees and ingredient costs. Inventory is something they have to worry about. Somebody who's doing a web-based product or a web-based business doesn't have to worry about those things. But we've seen some incredible synergies between those two organizations and those two different types of organizations. Suddenly, somebody who's putting together a web-based business realizes that there are other businesses out there that have real fixed costs, and there might be something that comes out of that someday. Some great inventory system in the cloud, I don't know. But uh, there's a lot of mixing and matching. We do some theme events. For example, our next event is our insanely and wildly popular foodie event. So all the products are food or food related. And we're going to be holding that at the Lord Hobo Brewery in Uber. I eat beer. <laughs> That's, uh, that makes our foodie event even more wildly popular, right? 
Um, we just did an event at MITRE Corporation where we were doing cybersecurity. Last month we were at Google and it was civic technology. So not always a theme, but when we do, it's a good place to check out what's going on in that particular industry. Other questions? How am I doing on time, Tom? You're good. We're good. Yeah, all right. Time. So I think we're all off to WordCamp. Is Reiko coming back up to send people on their way? No. I guess I'm sending people on their way. All right. So I want you guys all to go off and have a really, truly awesome WordCamp. And uh, when you're done with that, come and make me really cool websites for all those awesome products. Okay? Have a good day. Bye-bye.